I love how every subculture has its ongoing, unwinnable, no correct answer debates. What is the comparable PC versus Mac in aviation? The PC versus Mac argument in the aviation world is the high wing, low wing argument. Typically, this is more specifically reduced to Cessna versus Piper. Hmm, I wonder which plane would be the PC and which would be the Mac. I think in this case, the Piper would be the PC and the Cessna would be likely the Apple product. A Piper Cherokee is less quirky, not the mainstream choice per se. Cessnas are perhaps more like Apple for their ease of use over functionality in many ways. All that said, it depends on what you're doing, right? Depends on your application, depends on your knowledge, depends on a lot of things. That said, I hate Apple and their overpriced, locked ecosystem, less than hardware, and I would never fully give that comparison directly to a Cessna. I like Cessnas. Marshall McLuhan was so concerned about the attention span and minds in 1977. Imagine if he could see now the extent to which the medium has become the message. Marshall McLuhan has been making people think, laugh, and even worry from the earliest days of television. The broader culture encourages us to see things in polarities, see things through the lens of sides and picking one. Maybe this is the result of managing such overload. Our brains just find it easier to pick a side and stay there out of preservation. It's tribalism. I think it's uh, now we're playing backwards. We're going back into the bicameral mind, which is tribal, collective, without any individual consciousness. But it seems, Dr. McLuhan, that this, this, this tribal world is not friendly. Oh, no. Tribal people, uh, one of their main uh, kinds of sport is uh, sort of butchering each other. It's, you know, it's a, it's a full-time sport in tribal societies. Everyone has an opinion, and the older I get, the less I feel comfortable in any kind of certainty. However, I always question myself when I feel I have a line on anything. I try to leave the door open, or at least view it through a completely different view with some assumed malleability. A paradox is a form of cubism in which you look at the same situation simultaneously from different directions. Binary thinking is the death of creativity and humanity and culture. Nuance is a pastime now, something you can't squeeze into reels and shorts and TikToks. It is a kind of media ecology, you see. It's a, it's a way of using our available resources in the communication to keep people apart and to keep them uh, intact without merging. So yes, in general aviation, one of the most pervasive and constant arguments that everyone likes to have an opinion on is the high wing versus low wing argument. So I will offer here my view based on my experience for my kind of flying, and it's impossible to account for every variable to reflect every pilot's point of view. I think what's been most interesting and enlightening for me to sort out this debate was the transition I recently took last year from a Cessna 172 to a Piper Archer 2. I trained in a 172, it was all I knew. When I began flying an Archer, it was eye-opening. First, there was the training to get checked out in the Archer, and I just had to adjust my expectations for how far it would glide on a power-off landing, get used to managing fuel tanks, things like that. It felt like going from a Toyota Corolla to a Volvo sedan. It flew heavier, more solid in its stance and feel. I welcomed the change.
It would seem apropos to make a list and compare pros and cons of high wing versus low wing, which has been done ad nauseum. But I, I want to speak to something more about this comparison and the idea of comparison. It's how our monkey brains evaluate everything. It is a survival tool. And ultimately, I just have my thoughts to offer, so I won't belabor the point. In my case, I went from over 200 hours in a Cessna 172 to all of a sudden only flying a Piper Archer. Recently, after many hours now in the Archer, I went back to where I began in a 172. And in that one flight, revisiting the 172, I was able to bookend my perceptions, sort a little fact from fiction in my head and come to a conclusion. The inherent subjectivity is all included here. I fly for my reasons in my way, in the places and climates that I fly and situations that I fly in, with the budget that I'm on, with the people that I like to fly with, and my experience and wants and needs are my own, very much my own. Okay, so, barring the endless technical details that can be considered, like lateral control or performance and ground effect, stall speeds and downwash and tail effectiveness and dihedral effects and on and on, I am just interested in the overall feeling, the vibe, and what it's like to use the machine. Here are my conclusions in short form, and I'll present them as matters of irrefutable, unassailable fact, as opinions are these days. The low wing airplane is much easier to land, especially in higher winds and crosswinds. The low wing feels more stable through the air and less like you're hanging from a wing. It feels more like you're a part of the airplane. The low wing has a better sight picture generally and offers better visibility more often than a high wing, except for maybe views of the ground. The low wing is easier to pre-flight and to fuel than a high wing. The low wing feels more like, I don't know, a real airplane than a high wing. There is no love though without loss. When I think about flying the Archer versus the 172, I inevitably have to realize that I miss some things for sure. I miss having two doors. I miss being able to see the main tires. I miss being able to see as much as I used to of the ground. I miss the trim in a Cessna. I miss running fuel tanks on both. And have I mentioned I miss having two doors? If I was able to own an airplane and that airplane ended up being a high wing, well, then I would prefer a high wing because it's what I've got. If I was able to own an airplane and it was a low wing, then I'd be a low wing guy. As a renter, I have limited options as to what's available to me. And the only plane that I can take on actual trips is a low wing. Circumstantially then, for me, the low wing wins. I'm a low wing person, I guess. But I will say, I'm glad this is how it's working out right now because I like the low wing more, so much more. But all that being said, talk to me in August when it's 100 degrees. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's got a point of view. There's always something to learn from it. And once you get fixed in one direction, be prepared to take another. 